Have you ever wondered why so many people swear by kettlebell training? That's because kettlebells build toughness, training the in-between movements that you don't work with linear barbell and dumbbell exercises. Plus, as a conditioning tool, it creates strength endurance and work capacity. That said, I recommend ideally combining the kettlebell with other options for the most complete performance. Here are some kettlebell exercises that will offer a total body workout, offering benefits unique to the kettlebell. So starting out, we're going to begin with the kettlebell swing, surely the king of kettlebell movements. The swing is a hip hinge that develops super strong glutes and is fantastic for building lifting mechanics, strengthening the entire posterior chain. It also toughens up the grip and is perfect for conditioning. Someone in the comments once described the swing as a ballistic deadlift, and that should help you understand why it translates so well to sprinting, jumping and squatting. To perform the swing correctly, make sure that the hips are what drives the kettlebell upwards, and then let gravity do the rest. On the return though, it should be the kettlebell that drives the legs, so wait until the kettlebell touches or nearly touches your body, and then let that push you backwards. If you feel chafing in your hand, try letting it rest more on your fingers. Whereas if you're trying to build strength and you're using movements like the overhead press, then you might want to use a stronger grip to activate the nervous system. You should feel this in your glutes primarily. If you don't, then you can try using glute bridges as an activation exercise. The legs can and should bend a little bit, but this is not a squat. Keep the kettlebell close to your body and don't swing too high. Next up is the racked squat. I've talked about the goblet squat in the past, and shout out to Dan John who created the movement. Apologies for not mentioning him last time, I didn't realise he actually invented it. However, I'm talking about the racked squat today, as I've been enjoying it a lot. The racked squat lets you place two kettlebells in a great position for load bearing that is more similar to a back squat, but actually slightly safer, because you can just throw them to the side. It also doesn't put too much compressive force on the spine. The weight obviously isn't going to be as great as the back squat, but it's perfect for higher reps as a result, which makes it a good option for conditioning. Plus, a lot of people don't have access to a barbell at home, so kettlebells are a great alternative. This is a great opportunity to train your mobility, getting down nice and low. And again, this is where it's useful because you can get lower more safely than you might do with a really heavy back squat. Talking of squats that build mobility though, I can't make a list of kettlebell moves and not include the Cossack squat, which is one of my favorite movements. It's also an exercise that's in the frontal plane, making this selection of exercises a little more comprehensive than most, in my humble opinion. The Cossack squat is fantastic for developing hip mobility and strength, which can translate to reduced back pain and even a stronger back squat. Of course, it also helps you work towards things like the middle splits, helps you to kick higher. You can easily adjust the Cossack squat to suit your needs by turning the extended foot. If you point the foot more forwards, you'll be working the hips more and it becomes more like a side squat. But if you point the foot up in the air and rest on your heel and it's directed more away from the body, then this hits the hamstrings more. Either way, it's a really great weighted stretch. It's also really good for building one-legged strength, which can translate to athletic performance and other movements like the pistol squat. This is probably a good time to mention the shoes I'm wearing. These are the Hydra ESC swim run shoes from Vivo Barefoot, today's sponsor. These are trail running shoes and the lugs that are on these ones happen to be ideal for this kind of muddy outdoor workout. But Vivo make all sorts of shoes. When I'm training kettlebells at the gym, I use their Motor Strength shoes, which are designed for weightlifting and offer maximum support. As the name implies, Vivo Barefoot make barefoot shoes, or minimal shoes. These are shoes with a thin sole, no raised heel, and a wide toe box. They let you use your feet in the way that they're meant to be used, letting you splay your toes for a wider base of support, letting you feel the ground underneath for greater proprioception, and letting you rest your heel on the floor so that you aren't constantly shortening your calves. Moves like the racked squat, or Cossack squat, simply aren't as effective in regular shoes. Not only do the squishy soles of most trainers offer worse foundations for heavy lifting, like trying to lift a heavy weight on a trampoline, they also raise your heels, meaning you aren't training mobility in the same way, and you don't get the same benefits. So guys, if you want to start using your feet the way they are meant to be used during your training, then you can use code THEBIONEER15 to get 15% off your first pair of Vivos. Thanks again to Vivo for sponsoring this video, and now on with the show.
Now we're on to the upper body, starting with kettlebell halos. The kettlebell halo is a far more useful exercise than it may at first appear. To perform this one, you're going to grab your kettlebell by the horns, that's either side of the handle, and then rotate it around your head. The problem is that it's easy to get this movement wrong, using a shorter range of motion. Key here is to rotate the kettlebell around the back of the head, not around the top. And think about it this way, if you drop the kettlebell, you want it to fall behind you, not onto your head. Doing this should mean that your elbows naturally point up at the ceiling as much as possible, rather than straight forwards. And this matters because it stretches the triceps nicely, along with the lats, giving you more overhead range of motion. You can do these for high, high reps, making this a great form of conditioning that targets the upper body, something we don't see that much of. People like the great Gamma reportedly used hundreds of similar movements. He used the Gamma cast, which is a very similar idea, but using an Indian club. You also want to focus on keeping the core engaged so that your ribs aren't flaring, so you're not leaning back. This kind of upright core training is awesome because it's how we typically use our core strength in the real world. You'll also be resisting all those rotational forces on the core as you whip the bell around your head. We're going to try something else, the kettlebell chest press. If we're doing a complete workout, then we need a horizontal push. To get this, we could use what's essentially a dumbbell press off the ground, but with kettlebells. And the best way to perform this movement is while maintaining a glute bridge. This gives you a greater range of motion by raising the body off the ground, and it makes the movement a little gentler on the shoulders. Plus, what this also does is to get you the benefits you get from a glute bridge. So I really wanted to like this movement in theory. The great thing about doing a chest press with kettlebells as well is ostensibly that because they hang on the outside of your arms, they're constantly pulling the arms apart towards the ground. Now you not only have to press the weight upwards, but also resist that abduction. And this perfectly suits the function of the pecs. Again, in theory. The problem is that in order to use kettlebells that are heavy enough to offer a challenge, it means you're going to need some pretty hench ones. And these rest awkwardly on the forearms, making it quite painful and tricky. There are some jobs that are just better served by dumbbells or a barbell. If you really want to train your pecs with a kettlebell, why not perform a diamond push-up off one kettlebell to give the triceps more of a challenge? Or balance two kettlebells to make it a stability challenge too and allow yourself to get deeper into that push-up position. Just be careful with this one until you're confident. That said, there are better tools for both of these jobs. Next up is the bent over row, a horizontal pull that will hit the lats nicely in a horizontal position. You can perform this in a freestanding bent over fashion, or you can place one hand on your knee for support. The former makes this an anti-rotational movement, as you have to resist the weight pulling your body down towards one side. Whenever you push or pull with one hand, you need to brace the core in the transverse plane, so this is a very effective benefit. Plus, holding this unsupported position makes it a kind of good morning, giving the back glutes and hamstrings a nice isometric challenge. If you want to emphasize the rotational aspect, then you can add extra rotation as you pull the weight up. If you want to enhance the stability challenge, try using ballistic alternating rows. Throw the kettlebell up a bit as you lift it and then catch it on the other side in front of you. This way, you must brace in anticipation of the force as you swap arms. This works the multifidus muscles and prepares you for unexpected forces on the core, which are often what cause back pain. Or if you just want to emphasize the lats more, you can support your body with your hand on your knee and really focus on pulling that arm up and back. Keep it in tight towards the body. So there you have it guys, six moves that will hit nearly every body part using kettlebells. And as you can see, we're getting a wide variety of benefits that can only come from this kind of training, using torque and momentum to hit those in-between areas. And there are tons more I haven't touched on. The kettlebell clean and press, the gorilla walk, which I'm loving lately, the Turkish get-up, and loads more. If you like this, I might make another one of these in future. Until then, thanks a ton for watching, and let me know what your favorite kettlebell moves are in the comments down below. Oh, and check out the link in the description if you like this kind of training and you want to try my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0. Either way, thanks for watching and bye for now.